My name's Leslie Peterson, and I help bloggers turn their modest websites into thriving online enterprises with SEO, email marketing, and a little hard love encouragement to always move forward consistently and with a plan. Hello, everybody. Today, I'm excited to share with you the 24th item in the 25 things I do to grow my blogging business, and that is hire assistance, hire help. So uh, that's what we're going to talk about today. Number 24. I can't believe 25 is around the corner. What am I going to talk to you guys about? Just kidding. I have so much to tell you, so much to share with you, but we're going to focus on number 24 today, and that is hiring a team. So the first thing I want to do is talk to you about the different types of roles that we have hired as part of our blogging business, and then share with you a few tips or hints about the hiring details that I think made a world of difference for us. And hopefully they'll be helpful for you as well. So let's talk about the roles first. And to be clear, when I say that we've hired team members or we've paid people to work with us, that is always, always in the form of a contractor. Um, My business is set up as an LLC. My husband and I are both um, members of the LLC and we are the only employees in the company. We've chosen to hire contractors on a regular basis because uh, it's, I think it's better for them. It's definitely better for us. It allows us to be nimble while we do our very, very best when we hire people to make them feel like they are absolutely part of the team, absolutely part of the company. Um, They're every single time, critical, critical to our business. Um, it's just in the the contractor setup has just been the best for us as, as, uh, as a business. So when I say that we've hired a team, what I mean is we've hired uh, people in a contracting contractor role. So let's talk about the different roles. The first contractor, and that seems weird to call her this, the first contractor that we hired was um, Sue Rodman, who you've heard me talk about several times because she's just such an integral part of the company and its growth. Uh, But she was really a business partner. Our businesses merged and um, she stayed on, thank heavens, and was um, a large part of moving the, the company forward. So she did a lot of tactical work, just like I did, writing posts, updating posts, going to events. Uh, but she was also part of the strategy team. So she was um, had a huge part in making decisions about, um, you know, what products we were going to sell, what new things we were going to tackle, uh, where we were going to show up and speak, that sort of thing. So while technically she was a contractor, she was much more a role, a strategic role of, uh, of a business partner. But we, uh, the business, paid her through a, a large revenue share. So she had a large piece of revenue share, and that's how we worked together. Because, as you know, when you're an entrepreneur, you don't, you, you, you're pretty much working, like, let's say you're working 20 hours a day at first, and you're sleeping four hours, and maybe while you're working or sleeping, you're shoveling food into your mouth. <laughs> And, you know, always at the beginning stage. And Sue was playing that same role. So it didn't make sense to pay her from an hourly perspective. Also, you know, some things she was doing were, you know, whatever, $15 an hour things. Some things she were doing were $500 an hour things. Um, We just wanted her to feel tied to the company, um, to feel ownership in it. And so that's, that's essentially what we gave her. So that's the first role as a, as a business partner. So you want to be very, very careful who you hire in that capacity. Luckily, I knew Sue for a long time, and she had an incredible reputation um, in the same market that we were in. So it was a no-brainer. Um, but you do want to be careful with that, uh, that type of person uh, if you want to hire a, a strategy partner. So the second major hire that we made was um, as an editor. And that's, I should, I should clarify that. Um, when Kate came on board, we didn't hire her as an editor. We hired her as somebody to write for us and um, to go to events that we couldn't go to um, and to submit articles and that sort of thing. But she had shown herself just over and over and over again, committed to the business, um, extremely intelligent, 
and really understanding what we were doing and just really wanted to keep being a part of it. And as the business grew, we were able to grow her role as well. And so currently she is the editor at large for our business. She um, makes decisions about what go, what content goes in, what content comes out. She manages all of the updates. She makes sure she's on lead, leads the published team about what gets published on the site. Um, she has the free reign of you know making decisions. And we started that when my family and I decided we were going to hit the road in our RV and enjoy a little bit of the freedom that we preach about. Uh, So we were gone about 14 months and she really managed everything. And as we run our Atlanta blog from Denver, uh, she still is in that capacity managing that. So she uh, has, she gets an hourly rate and revenue share. So her revenue share is not as large as the strategic business partner, um, but she has revenue share, part of the ad revenue, part of the affiliate revenue, and then also um, gets an hourly rate from us. And then the other uh, types of people, oh, so we also have a VA who does administrative work for us. She's been with us well before COVID, and she uh, gets paid an hourly rate. And then we have writers who uh, work for us, who are paid by the project that they submit. And uh, some of them have been with us for a long time. Others, you know, have come and gone as their, um, as our needs change and as their needs change. We don't have as many right now just because we're focusing on other things. Um, But at one point we had as many as 14 writers for, um, for a good year, 14 writers who were submitting articles every week. So as you can imagine, uh, our editor and our VA uh, were um, going crazy. We actually at that time hired an additional VA to help with that load. Um, But that's, uh, that's the type of role that we hire for that that has been um, very impactful to our business. So what I want to share with you next, as you're thinking about, oh, I might I might be able to use somebody like that in my business for uh, hiring writers, hiring people to update content, hiring people to manage newsletters for you, um, to manage contracts, to get articles published that other people submit, um, to manage client contracts, all of those things. Um, Here are some considerations for you. lessons that are things that we've done really well, I think, and then areas where um, we fell short and we've made corrections. And I want to share those with you so that you can um, learn our lessons um, the easy way. So the first thing I want to let you know is in order to have a successful relationship with somebody, whether they are at the strategy level or, you know, just a VA for five hours a week at the tactical level. That is this. The devil is in the details. You have to know exactly what you want that person to do, exactly what it's going to take in order to make them successful, what what things they need to do in order to be successful before you even begin hiring somebody. I think a lot of times we go, okay, I need help. I'm going to hire somebody. I'm going to hire somebody to help me. And then they come on board and you're like, I'm not exactly sure what I want you to do. And then they do something and you're like, that's not what I wanted them to do. And then you get frustrated because they're doing things you didn't want them to do. And they're getting frustrated because they have no idea how to be successful for you. So I think the most important thing that you can do is to really get into the details about what you want someone to help you with. And listen to this. Even more importantly, what do you not want somebody to help you with? For a very, very long time, I did not want to hire writers. I wanted the voice on the site to be mine and Sue's because we had merged her content and we are our content merged beautifully and we have um, very different writing styles, but it was definitely our voice that was out there and uh, I didn't want any other writers. So that made it really easy when somebody came to us and we're like, well, you know, I want to work for you and write for you. It was an easy way to say, no, we just don't do that. Now, obviously that's changed over time, but the point is know what you want help with and 
know what you don't want help with. And then once you decide what you want help with, for example, maybe you want to write the letter portion. This Now, this is a help that I had um, during our RV trip. I wanted the newsletter to still go out every week. I wanted to write the letter portion of the newsletter and then identify the other articles that went in there if they weren't filled with, with uh, contracted articles. Uh, but I didn't always have good internet. So Maria was this beautiful, beautiful person who helped us during that time. And I would write the letter, sometimes just in an email to her, I would send her the letter and I would say, you know, here's the two articles we want linked, or maybe those were in Monday at the time, I can't remember. Um, and she would put the entire newsletter together. She handled it. She made sure it got scheduled. She made sure the contracted pieces were in there, um, that all the UTMs were set, all of those important, important details. She handled it. All I had to do was say, here's the letter from me, because I wanted it to be my voice. And here's the, you know, here's the articles that are scheduled in the in the editorial calendar. So we set up very, very detailed directions about how I would send her things, how she would test things, how she knew what went where, how she knew what photos to use, how she knew what links to use, how she knew what clients were impacted, um, how she, she knew when to send a newsletter. If it included a client, um, con a, a contracted item from a client, she knew to send it to them to make sure that they saw that. So we detailed all of those things. And the way that I communicate with, uh, with my editor at large, with my VA, with the writers who work with us, is um, I have checklists for them. But every time I want them to understand the details, I send them a video with uh, out my I, I do the work on the screen and I screen capture everything and I send it over to them so they can watch it again and again. They have a checklist that coincides with it. They can see me doing the work. With, so when they know, when I say click this button, they can actually see where that button lives and how to click it. So I'm very, very detailed. I want to make sure that they know how to be successful. So Kate, gets a raise almost every year and a bonus. And then she, I want her to know that that raise and that bonus is coming. Because if I have to say to her, you know, there's no raise or there's no bonus, she would be shocked if she wasn't getting feedback along the way. So everything that you can do to make them, to make that person that you've hired know how to be successful then that makes them better at what they do. And that makes you <laughs> happier also. So always make sure that you do examine each and every detail and outline what it's going to take for someone to deliver what you want and what you need. And the hardest part of that is not detailing that out. The hardest part of that it begins with you understanding exactly what those things are before you ever have to tell somebody. That's the hardest part. Okay, devil in the details. I belabored that. Let's go to the next one. Uh, the other thing that I think it's important to determine is whether this person's going to have to interact with clients or not. Will this person be getting on FaceTime with clients? Will this person be uh, sending emails to clients? Will this person be sending con contracted information to clients? And I think it's important that you understand that and that you hire the right person for that because that it's one thing to accidentally get something up on a blog which you can take down or on social media which you can take down or you know accidentally send a newsletter on the wrong day but it's an altogether different thing when you don't have somebody or, or when the person that you have interacting with your clients messes up and I don't mean messes up by accidentally sends them, you know, a contract a day late. I mean that the the interaction is off when they're not delivering the right um, level of customer service that you deliver with the right beautiful, energetic, respectful, va you know, tone that says I value this customer when their integrity is not at the same level that you have your integrity. So I think just keep that in, in mind. And you don't, you might have somebody in mind who you want to hire. 
Um, but they, they might not be the person to put in front of a customer. And it doesn't mean you don't hire them. It just means that you define the role a little bit differently. So just very careful about how who you put in front of clients. And so, so far, I've only had three people ever uh, that have been, you know, client facing, obviously Sue and our editor in large, and then Maria, who worked with us uh, for our newsletter. And they were very special people with very special skills that I, and, and there may, you know, I'm not saying that the other people that we hire aren't capable. I'm just saying these are my, these are the people I trust. And that's why I keep that interaction very limited. The next thing, if you're hiring people to help with writing or updates, updates of your content, because you know how I feel about content updates, they're everything. And our class is opening again this fall. I hope you're going to join us if you haven't already. But just keep in mind that those are two different skill sets. What a person who's doing a lot of writing for you obviously needs to be able to display their experience and their authority on the topic and then either understand SEO or understand the tools that you've given them in order to make sure that that article is SEO optimized. But the person who's doing updates on your existing content doesn't necessarily need that same skill set. They might just be following a checklist or they might be just learning how to write because they're not going to be coming in and writing, rewriting the article. I mean, they, maybe they might come to you and say, hey, this article is really off and it needs to be rewritten. And that doesn't mean they have to do it. It could just be that they tell you that it needs to be rewritten. So keep that in mind as you're hiring writers and people who update your writing or the content on your site do not need the same skill set. And I think that the hourly rate is probably a little bit different too, or the way that you pay them, I should say. Our updates, um, we pay, the person who does our updates gets paid by the hour. And the person who does a writing for us gets paid by the project. Two different things, two different focuses, two different skill sets, and two different ways that you'll train those people to write for you. And the last thing I want to share is my own my own thing. It's you know you might you feel free to disagree with me. In fact, write me and tell me if you disagree with me. But I do not hire people who are active bloggers. I did. I used to. I used, uh, you know, I don't know, 2017, 2018, I hired a good nine, nine or 10 writers uh, to come and do content for us periodically. Almost all of them were bloggers. And what I found was that while their intention was amazing, and all of them were, were great writers, beautiful people, nothing against the people at all. But what I learned is their blog always came before mine. And that's as it should be, right? Like my business is going to come before somebody else's business unless they've hired me as a consultant. Uh, But that doesn't work if you're hiring people, especially people that are in your space. They're going to see the outlines you give them. They're going to take the SEO training that you offer them. They're going to take the opportunities that you pl- up to, for me, places to, to send them to. And they're going to write what I ask. And then they're going to also write it for their own blog. And I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that. I'm saying I would do this exact same thing if I was in their position. But what I found is that when I hired people who were not bloggers, or maybe they had a blog, but it was it was a for fun thing, it was a hobby, it was something on the side and not their primary focus, um, I got much better content from them. I got much more thoughtful content from them. I got much better quality content from them. And the focus was really on getting that story out for me as opposed to getting something out for me so they could get the real story out for them. So that's, so when I saw that, um, I guess, I think it was like 2018. Um, at that point, that's when I made the decision, you know what, these are great people who I really like and really enjoy and they have good content and they're fantastic writers, but I'm not doing it again. I'm not making that, dis- that, that 
um, decision again. So since that point in time, there's only been one or two instances where people who we've hired as writers to come on for us um, have a blog that is their primary focus. And I think it's made a world of difference. So I know that's a little bit controversial. Maybe you feel differently. Maybe you've had different experience. And if you have, yes, good for you. Write me back and tell me what made the difference. Uh, but that is, um, that's just where, that's where we stand today. So there you go. We've hired uh, people to help us with strategy as, as business partners. I've hired an editor, an update team, writers, VA, and the VA helps with um, very I don't want to say trivial tasks, but that kind of grunt work, like saving things out to MSN every day um, or um, or helping, you know, throw affiliate links into our content. And uh, did I say updates? So writers and updaters. Uh, and, uh, and it's been great. It's been huge in helping us grow, helping us scale because I can't do it all by myself. And once I realized that, once I was willing to invest in that, uh, those other people, then we've absolutely, oh God, a hundredfold or more have realized uh, a return from that investment. So if you decide to do it, remember the devil's in the details, figure out what you want them to do and how they can be successful before you ever begin looking for somebody and hiring them. Uh, make sure you make a distinction between the jobs that need client interaction and don't need client interaction and hire differently for that. Don't forget that writers and updaters are two different skill sets. And think twice, at least give me that. Think twice before you hire somebody uh, on a regular basis who has uh, a blog of their own that is their bread and butter. There you go, folks. That's number 24. I am excited to bring you the last one, number 25 tomorrow. Have a great afternoon.